Hi, and welcome to Let's Cook, Life Skills for Kids on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Mitra Ahani. I'm a speech and language pathologist specializing in functional and social communication for kids on the autism spectrum. I began this journey when my niece was diagnosed with autism. The opportunity to observe my niece, both in her educational and home settings, helped me to realize the importance of social communication and functional life skills to her independence and long-term development. So, I teamed up with an occupational therapist and a special education teacher, and together we developed some fun interactive lessons and activities that promote engagement, communication, and life skills for kids with autism. We've created this collection of videos to help parents build functional skills while engaging in an activity everyone can enjoy. What's more fun than cooking? It's a fantastic platform for engagement as it has a natural sequence, an organized environment, and a consistent reward in the end. Cooking is also a great way to incorporate siblings and peers for an afternoon of fun together. This particular activity is designed for children who can engage and self-regulate for brief periods of time and present with some ability to engage in back and forth communication provided they have the appropriate support. Of course, the steps of the activity can be modified to meet the needs of your child, and we offer a few suggestions along the way as to how you might do this. In order to offer you some tools to cope with the unexpected, we've also included some outtakes for you to watch that actually occurred during the taping of this video. These demonstrate positive behavior interventions and strategies that can help make the activity feel successful for you and your child. All of our visual recipes are downloadable files that provide a helpful visual structure. Please refer to the link titled Visual Structures to better understand why using these visuals is so important. We suggest you watch the video once, all the way through. Watch the outtakes and click on the link titled Safety and Hygiene. Next, prepare for your own cooking session by gathering necessary ingredients, printing the visual recipe, and getting the cooking space set up. As you watch the video, keep in mind that when many of our kids started this program, they only completed the first several steps, and that's okay. Each time, they are likely to engage more and more until they are participating throughout the recipe. We strongly suggest you pick the recipe your child is most motivated by and repeat it several times before moving to another recipe. The repetition creates a predictable environment and promotes engagement, learning, and independence. Remember, the objective isn't a perfect meal. Above all, we hope you enjoy the process and have fun together. One of our key objectives is to help you connect with your child through activities that he finds interesting and motivating. When you cook together, we want you to keep in mind there's no perfect recipe for your child to achieve. It's the process that provides the opportunity for learning and positive interaction. While cooking, your child may lose his focus on the recipe. That's okay. You can try to help him regain his focus, but sometimes it's best to take a detour or even take a break before trying to help him re-engage in the activity. When I work with my students, I try my best to stay in tune with them. This is a dynamic process, and I take my cues from their behavior. Sometimes when they disengage, I join them in activities that are regulating for them. Other times, I simply redirect. For example, I have a student who likes to bang on the counter. When he does this, I join him in the banging, but I deliberately give the banging some structure by counting to five. Should we count together five times? Ready? One, With me. One, two, three. And five. Five. Look, our waffles are all done. done. So should we put them on a plate? Let's get the plate. This creates a clear beginning and ending for the banging, which allows him to comfortably return to cooking. If this isn't enough to help him regulate and re-engage, my next approach is to ask him if he would like to take a break. Do you need some help? Do you want to take a break? Yes. Right, tell me. Do you want to take a break? Okay, go ahead and go to the break area. Sometimes he takes a five minute break. Other times he needs 30 minutes before he is ready to get back to cooking. You will know what works best for your child. But we encourage you to try some of these strategies to help strengthen engagement. We have found that visuals are critical to the learning process. For this activity, we are using a set of pictures that describe each step. And these help clarify the kids expectations. They help them participate and predict the next steps and final outcome. Visuals can also help reduce anxiety by providing context and a step-by-step -step sequence. Think of it like your daily planner or your to-do list. 
Over time, visuals can decrease the need for constant adult prompting or involvement and increase independence, and we all love that. We have provided both visual recipes and visual schedules for each recipe. These can be downloaded. The visual recipe can be placed in front of you and your child and provide step-by-step -step instructions for each recipe. The visual schedule can be placed within view of your child so they can refer to it as needed. You can simplify these steps according to the needs of your child. Most of all, we want you guys to have fun together. Safety and hygiene are essential when cooking with your child. Please remember that adult supervision is required throughout each step of every recipe. Always begin by washing hands thoroughly with soap and water, and to keep clothes clean, put on an apron. When it comes to cutting, I only let kids use a butter knife, but of course you will decide what is best for your child. But cooking areas should be clean and clear of any sharp objects. When ingredients require a sharper knife, I do the cutting myself and have the kids watch. Be sure to keep your child away from any hot appliances such as ovens, stoves, and waffle irons. I like to stand between my student and any hot appliance we might be using. Long hair should be pulled back and long sleeves should be rolled up. After working with raw eggs or meats, hands should be immediately washed with soap and water. Keeping dish towels handy makes it easier to quickly clean up spills. It also helps to have a trash can close by. Remember to take your time and proceed slowly through the recipes to avoid accidents or problems. Most of all, we want to help you create an environment that is easy and safe to have fun in.